In this video we will render realistic clouds, for this we will first discuss basic scene setup, then talk about all relevant volumetric rendering options and finally discuss various optimization techniques. So in this video here we're going to be discussing on how to render some realistic looking clouds and for this I prepared this simple demo scene here and now I have a lighting setup that resembles a kind of sunset scenario. And then I also have a lighting setup that resembles more like a standard daylight setup. So with this it's easy to see how your cloud behaves in different kind of lighting situations and if your shaders are set up correctly. As usual you can always find all of my scene files on my Patreon together with a whole course on car rendering. So you can check this out if that's interesting for you. But now without any further ado let's see how this here was set up. So normally before I start to work on any kind of shaders, I just check that my scene is set up correctly. For this I just put some very simple dummy objects in here with very simple shaders just to be sure that everything here works correctly. So for example, the sphere in the center here indicates that my reflections are working correctly. The sphere here on the left indicates that my sun direction here is correct and I have the correct amount of specular here. And then the sphere here on the right shows that my intensities of the reflections here are working correctly. So this I can also double check with my other lighting setup. So let me hide this and then show the other lighting setup just to be sure that it also works in this one here. So you can see we have the correct amount of global illumination, the correct amount of reflectivity and so on. So once this is set up, we basically can start to import our cloud and then start working on the shaders or the properties of the cloud itself. So now after we made sure that our scene here renders correctly, everything here works correctly, we can then stop our rendering and we can load a VDB file that contains our cloud data. So let's go into the V-Ray tab in here. Let's open this V-Ray volume grid and just place that into the scene. And then a dialog here will open and then you can choose what kind of file you want to import. So here we're gonna choose this cloud VDB file and then a new dialog will open and it asks if you know in what kind of software this volume data was generated. In this case, we don't choose any kind of preset. So let's use this button in here and let's zoom out. And we can see that now we have some sort of cloud here in our scene already. So let's now open here the modifier tab. Let's first choose the right orientation here of our cloud because at the moment it looks like it's flipped upside down. So we can choose here to flip the up axis and now our cloud here looks correctly. We can then hide here our shader balls. And let's just make a preview rendering and see what we have now. So you can see we have something here already showing up in our rendering. And at the moment it doesn't really look very nice yet, but of course we're gonna tweak that. But we have some kind of volumetric data already appearing here in our IPR rendering. As a short disclaimer, I use V-Ray CPU for rendering this. You normally can get much better performance if you use V-Ray GPU when rendering volumetric data. Just in my case, I don't really have a good GPU and I have a quite powerful CPU, so that's why I still use the CPU rendering mode. But if you have a decent GPU, then you will get definitely much better or nicer performance when rendering volumetric data or these type of effects. So now we can see our cloud in the rendering, but we can also see a kind of representation here in the viewport. You can define that here in this preview tab. So with this detail reduction, you can show how detailed this here should be. So let's increase the detail reduction here to a higher value. You can see now we see a much rougher preview and the lower we go here with this value, the more details we will see. We can also use the GPU preview mode here in order to get a hopefully better representation of the cloud in the viewport. But in my case, I will just switch this off here. Let's put the detail reduction, for example, to a value of 10. So we can get a kind of like fitting representation here in the viewport. So now let's see how we can define the look of our cloud. And at the moment the cloud appears extremely black, but we can change that here in the rendering tab and then in these volumetric options. And once you open this here, 
you have this new dialog that appears on your screen and there's three different tabs in here, fire, smoke color and smoke opacity. In our case, fire doesn't really apply because this one only, for example, applies if you have some explosion or something like this, where in the volume, there's some light, which is basically also illuminating here in the volume itself. Here we just have smoke data. So we just have smoke color and smoke opacity. So first let's define the color for our cloud. And you can do that based on various kind of settings or parameters which can be stored in your volumetric data. In our case, we don't really know what kind of data is stored in here. So we just choose a constant color for our whole cloud. And that's also basically all that we need. At the moment, the color here is set to this kind of dark grayish value. Let's raise that to a pure white value and then see what we have in here. So now our cloud already appears a bit brighter, but even though we have a pure white color here set up, it still appears too dark. And the reason for that is absorption. So in the smoke opacity, you can define the absorption color. At the moment it's set to this kind of like mid gray value. Let's raise that and see what will happen. So let's raise that for example, to a value of 230. And now you can see that our cloud already appears brighter because less light is being absorbed. We can then further on define the opacity here of our cloud by just raising or lowering this value. Let's raise that first and see what will happen. So this one is with a very high opacity value. Let's put here a value of 0.35, for example. So our cloud looks a little bit more transparent and kind of scatters the light inside a bit more. So speaking about scattering, there is this scattering option here in the smoke color. And at the moment it's set to one of those approximate modes. And that means it uses a very efficient way to calculate the scattering, but this is not necessarily physically accurate. So the physically accurate one is this ray traced one. So once you enable this one in here, you can see that the look of the cloud changes. We now also have this kind of like bluish sky color, which is being introduced here into our cloud. We have this like more interesting color variations with this warm sunlight in here and this kind of like more cooler tones in the shadow area. If we use one of these approximate methods in here, you can see the cloud more has like a uniform type of color. There's also a third mode, which is this disabled mode. So in this case, we don't have any scattering at all. And you can see in this case here, that would look way too dark, but this of course renders the fastest. And if we use this approximate mode, it renders also still quite fast. And then the ray traced one, of course, takes a bit longer time to render, but it will give you the best or most realistic results. We try to get something that looks a little bit comparable to those clouds in here. So I think with this option, we get already somewhat close to those colors here in the background. So now comparing those colors here in the background, I feel that the sunlight could be a bit stronger here on the cloud itself. And this of course also luckily is quite easy with later versions here of V-Ray. So let me just select the sunlight. And then in the effect atmosphere tab here, we can raise this for example, to a much higher value. And this would only then affect here the atmospheric effects. So in this case, these clouds, I think this is too high. Let's choose a value of four to get something that looks a bit more like what we have here in the background. Now let's select the cloud again. And especially when using the ray traced scattering mode, the rendering becomes of course more slow. And there's something that we can do in order to improve that. So here in the step percentage and shadow step percentage, we can raise these values and this will basically lower the quality here of the volume. But oftentimes you don't really see a very, very big difference. So in this case, let's, for example, raise this one here to 750 and the shadow step, for example, to 1500. And it of course will look slightly different, but it will render much, much faster compared to before. You can easily just raise these kind of values in here when you do preview rendering. And then when you do a final rendering, then you can lower those values back to their default value again. So now let's go again to the volumetric options. And there's one more parameter that is quite interesting. 
and that is this phase function here. And with this, we can define exactly how the scattering here is applied. So this value goes between negative one and positive one. And let's raise that, for example, to 0.5. And you can see now we have more the appearance of some forward scattering. So that means we have the light source that is behind the cloud and the light is scattered more forward towards the camera and if we make it to negative 0.5 for example we have exactly the other effect so that means more light is scattered away from the camera and by this the cloud appears more thick so let's raise this again to for example 0.3 to get a nice balance in the scattering for our cloud so that we get something that looks more or less similar to what we can see in here Lastly, I want to talk about this volume light cache option here. And this one is an option to speed up the overall rendering of the cloud using the light cache. But this only works if you're not really in this IPR mode. So if you're in the IPR mode, this can drastically slow down the rendering. So whenever you're in IPR mode, you better disable this. But now let's do a simple single frame rendering and see how long we need to render this in here. So now using the standard bucket rendering mode, it rendered roughly 42 seconds here on my computer. And now let's use the volume light cache here to see how we can speed that up. So now when enabling the volume light cache, it gives you access for the light cache speed up settings in here. And this basically works that the higher the value here is, the more the rendering would be speeded up, but it can also introduce some kind of artifact. So let's try to drastically speed this up by putting here a value of 0.99. Let's make another rendering. And you can see that now the rendering was finished in only 23 seconds, so roughly half of the time. But at the same time, you have these kind of artifacts which may appear here in the cloud and then you would need to lower the settings in here. And at one point you would anyway reach the same rendering speed like what you would use when you totally disable this. So you can choose for your own discretion if that makes sense for your particular project. Just always remember that when you're in IPR rendering mode to switch off this here entirely because otherwise you will really get very, very slow rendering speed here in real time. So there you have it. That would be my advice to render some nice realistic clouds in V-Ray. If you found this useful, I'm sure you can also find lots of interesting stuff on my Patreon together with a whole course on car rendering. So you can check this out if that's interesting for you. Otherwise, see you next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.